Why don't we show the viewers what it is that we can do with ultrasound pre-hospital? What's feasible? Okay, sure, yeah, we'll just take a little quick look here. Give me a little cold. So right now you're doing a cardiac view. That's right, so you can actually see his heart in real time. So say this is a PEA patient, you're unsure if there's mechanical capture, you don't know if there's mechanical motion at all, or if it's just basically asystole with a little electroactivity <coughs> still. Mm -hmm. You can verify if there's cardiac motion or not. Okay. So now this pseudo-PEA patient is actually more of a shock patient and can be treated more appropriately. Most of the causes of cardiac arrest can also be seen. You can actually visualize a tamponade, which, you know, from a physical assessment, especially patient arrest, you're not really ever going to know that. You know, you're going to treat them standard ACLS, which is probably going to fail. Whereas this, we can find the cause and either transport immediately if need be or perhaps fix it ourselves in the field. Okay. And just in terms of the surface anatomy that you used to get that vision or to get that view, how easy is it to do that in, in the field? Um, it's really unaffected by motion. You don't really have motion artifact or anything like an EKG would. One of the nice things is even though it looks a little difficult is it's real time. So if you're not getting a great view, you can actually adjust your view in real time. It's okay. a little more intuitive than, say, interpreting a CT or an X-ray. So what was your ballpark surface marking for where you did that? Um, that's called a peristernal long axis view, and that's about where V2 would be, a standard 12 lead. Okay. So and you a lot of the landmarks are you things you literally just put at. it down there. Right, okay. right, and then you just move around so you get the view you want and then you can assess Perfect. the cardiac activity. And is that the only view that you're using at this stage in, in this particular scenario? Um, there's the a couple other views. You can also do a subcostal view, which if you're familiar with the FAST exam, that's usually yeah. part of it. So this is going to be a little bit of pressure yeah. underneath your xiphoid because I have to get kind of flat here. I'm going to put just a little extra gel. It's right there, we're actually looking through the liver. So right now, if this patient was in arrest, I would know that his heart is indeed beating. He's got a good yeah. ejection fraction. You know, if it was very, you know, saggy, just barely contracting low mm -hmm. EF, we would, you know, look into inotropic support yeah. instead of just, you know, doing this catch-all epi and fluid for everybody. Okay. I mean, have a more individualized approach. Okay. So, so you're using it at the moment in the context of a PEA cardiac arrest, or it could be an asystole cardiac arrest, obviously. It could you as well. Until you put on the probe. But... Um, what, uh, what level of training do you think is, is feasible to get people comfortable with getting that view, which literally has to take less than 10 seconds to achieve, isn't right. it? Right. Um, well, the nice thing about those two views is even with the Lucas device, you can actually get the probe in there and get a ballpark area. Yep. So with the proper training and discipline, you know, making sure that you're not taking too long. So I could, you know, Lucas is going, I think I have a good view, they stop it. I can see it instantly. Okay. And are there training programs being set up for paramedics around the world at this stage? Um, there are some instructors that are doing some things, but nothing that's really nationally or internationally known, no standard per se at okay. this time. So you see this as sort of a blank canvas, really, in terms of its utility. Is the cost prohibitive? Um, especially in US EMS, you know, we're very budget conscious. It is an expensive piece of technology, but there's so much we can do with it. As you look, the indications are basically limited only by the training. You know, you can go into ortho injuries, all sorts of things we can visualize. Back to the FAST exam, you know, just to do one exam, a $30,000, $35,000 machine, yeah, it may not be worth it. But this can help us gain vascular access in just about any patient. We have IOs, but we know they don't flow as well. So even a very large patient, you'll be able to get a large bore IV maybe in the upper arm that's, you know, a centimeter too deep where you wouldn't be able to feel it, but you can visualize it. Great. So this can be used on, you know, almost every sort of patient you can imagine Great. in some um, capacity. I think we should take the opportunity to show the viewer uh, the utility of ultrasound in detecting pneumothorax. Now, obviously, we don't have a patient with a pneumothorax here today, but you can demonstrate, I guess, the surface markings of where you put the probe, sure. how easy it is to see appropriate lung sliding, and, and tell the viewer then what a pneumothorax might look like should there be a pneumothorax on the ultrasound. Sure, yeah, especially in our environment, we know we can't listen. I do flight, so really, you, it is impossible to listen, so... 
something develops in flight, we really have no way of knowing unless you know, we have a sudden cardiovascular collapse and we rule out other causes. Um, this will allow you in any environment to detect a pneumothorax and much, with much more accuracy than auscultation. Data shows auscultation really isn't very good for detecting, but this is going to be actually more sensitive and specific than a chest x-ray and can be done instantly in any environment. So basically, you just think of it like a stethoscope where you'd listen on a patient. You do top and bottom on anterior, lateral, and posterior. Each lung gets you a good idea of what's going on. So you'll see these two black spots on the edges. Those are actually his ribs. And then the middle here, you know, a little deeper here, you see this kind of shimmering line there. Mm -hmm. And that indicates lung slide. So right here, yeah. it's a little bit brighter. Kind of, they call it a marching ant sometimes. If that pleural interface was eradicated through air in the way, it would be a bright white line, but it would look still. Yeah. And then if you're still not really sure, because sometimes it can be subtle, we can do what's called M mode. And that's going to show motion along a single line. And this is what we call a sandy beach. Yeah. And that's good. Basically, you have these straight lines, and then below the pleural interface from the aerated lungs, you kind of lose the signal, and it gets kind of a staticky, sandy look. Whereas if you had pneumothorax, it would just be these straight lines all the way down. Perfect. And it's it, been shown that medics can learn this in about 20 minutes and be very accurate in diagnosing pneumothorax. So in terms of your protocols for detecting pneumothorax in the field, where exactly do you look? Um, ideally, it would be, like I was saying, kind of Think about where you auscultate on a patient. Yep. Basically, the, um, by the apices and the bases on the anterior, lateral, and posterior, ideally. Okay. Brandon, one of the other very important utilities of ultrasound is where vascular access is very difficult. Um, can you demonstrate uh, in this patient uh, how you would use uh, ultrasound to facilitate vascular access? Sure, so basically we just use this um, linear probe, sometimes referred to as vascular probe. It won't be able to look at the lungs and heart like we did earlier, it just penetrates very shallow, which is great for peripheral vasculature. So we would just kind of take a look here. Okay, so I see some of these little black circles here. Those are either veins or arteries. Yep. So what Brandon, uh, what Brandon is demonstrating to us right now is using ultrasound for vascular access. So like and right when here. it can sometimes be difficult to see, uh, or when a patient is shut down, it can sometimes be very difficult to see what uh, vascular access uh, you have available. So what he's done is used a vascular probe uh, and he's following down the vessels. And Brandon, what are, what are you demonstrating right now? So basically we're looking for these little circular structures because the best way to think of this is like a CT slice. So that's what you're gonna see in this position. When you see that, you know it's going to be either a vein or an artery. Um, so what we do is we just push a little pressure, and if it occludes, it's a vein. Yep. If it won't, it's an artery. And actually, sometimes you'll even be able to see the pulsating of the walls if it is an artery. So then once you're able to identify that, you're able to just insert the catheter and yep. move on. 